since the last time you you know you kindly invited me uh, along uh, to have a discussion, you won't be invited back. Don't worry. I know that. I gather this is my last. I gather this is my last time, so I'm going to get it all in. Uh, everything I want to say. Good life, right? So we're here to about nine o'clock tonight. Please like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. So today, the Dave is uh, Trevor back and Karen Proctor. Trevor Merrill's back from the UCG. Thank you for coming and. Uh, joining us uh you mentioned when you come in about soho street what was what was that about there was queries about whether knowledge students could call soho street because the sign mysteriously disappeared which gave yes. an exemption to taxis around the time they did Crossrail. so we've been trying to track back with westminster who've lost another traffic order and it's all gone radio silence because when they introduced the new plans for oxford street in the autumn one of the things that we objected to was that they were closing the access from Soho Street. And um, we need it as taxi drivers. Yeah. And we've done quite a bit of work um, ourselves in the LTDA with the Soho Society and the residents. And they're pro us having that access because yeah. otherwise they get all the traffic. Well, the story behind it, how it actually happened for me was a new examiner came and he gave someone a zero for using Soho Street. And yet we was all under the impression for the past 10 years that we have access to Soho Street. We confirmed it with Westminster Council maybe nine years ago that the sign was missing, and, but taxis have access. And then they looked into it and Westminster Council came back with the funniest thing. They said you can use Soho Street only to access Oxford Street, but not beyond. As if that's policeable. What does that mean? You stay there forever? Well, you know, access only means I mean, that you're yeah. going into the street to sit down and pick up. So we have access, but no through route. So access only is no through route. But you can't have access only on the street before the through route. That would be bananas. Yeah. So we've got access to Oxford Street, but then you're going to monitor where we go once we're in Oxford Street. But other traffic can go wherever it wants. But the one that came through Soho Street would be monitored. It's unpoliceable. But that's, that was what Westminster Council kind of explained to TFL. Well, that sort of access doesn't really um, hold out. Because if you did, say, yeah, the passenger says, I want to go to Selfridges, and then you go for, and you pick them up from Soho Square, and you go out and along, and then they change their mind. I'm not going to go to Selfridges. I want to go straight to Marlborough Station. What do you do, sir? I can't do it. Well, no, I mean, You've I, got to get out. access only <laughs> signs are always yeah. um, negotiable yeah. because if you really want to be legal about it, you would pull into the street, you would look at a building, and then you'd pull out again and kind of, you accessed it, didn't you? That's kind of how you get around it on the knowledge-wise. Now they're waiting for Westminster Council to put the sign back up, which they were given two weeks to do it. Yeah. Um, and then checking Google, it came down in 2009? It did. There's some background to that. So oh, good. luckily, somebody in oh, our telephone yeah. group, because myself and Paul Brennan from the LTDA have hunted everywhere for this sign, because I got my badge in summer 2008, so I was still able to drive the Dirty Dozen for a couple of years before yeah. the Crossrail works. And somebody <coughs> very helpfully, I think it was someone, so I'll say thank you to Alex in the Telegram group, tracked it back on Google. So it was there from 2009 to 2012, so I've saved it now. So what we've been doing with Westminster as part of this um, redevelopment of Oxford Street is we've been going to the public drop-in meetings and speaking to the consultants and asking questions. So when we saw this new plan for Oxford Street, the consultant um, said to me, oh, well, you know, they um, we can't use Soho Street to exit. I said, well, it's always been a controlled left turn. Um the signals are all controlled by TfL, although it's a Westminster road. And I showed him on Cabby's mate, the greyed out area. So in 2009, and we know this because we finally, a little while after I joined the ranks committee, we had a meeting with Westminster and we finally got the previous head of public realm to admit they're not enforcing taxis, buses and cycles along Oxford Street, which was the norm for years. I remember on the knowledge, I could only go down there on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I used to have to walk down there other times or park the scooter and go and look at stuff. So they haven't enforced it, more or less because they've let everything else through. So the new plan will be from Soho Street down pretty much to Great Portland. It will be 
buses, taxis and cycles because they're changing directions of the roads to funnel traffic yeah. off. And enforced. And enforced. With AMPR, we've been told oh. that is the case because they're losing bundles. Mm-hmm. They've lo- lost absolute bundles. And then we'll be able to cross Oxford Circus. There'll be no left or right turns in any direction. And we will still be able to continue all the way up. And there's some reversals at the, the top end. Um, but apparently it will be enforced. The only bit that's a bit strange is they have to be able to get a turn into Stratford Place for servicing. Yeah. So there'll be a little bit of an exemption on that section. Right and left? Um, I believe it will be, yeah. Wouldn't hurt, would it? Because it's a no. dead-end street. You'd only be going there for whatever. So I don't know. I told you she's the girl. To yeah. <laughs> to have on this, because especially for your students, because yeah. it's updating all the time what they're going to be asked and what they can't do, because mm. the streets are... It's going to be a nightmare for us. Yeah, yeah. we've minutes. not had the final report, and we did go back and we made quite a strong case about Soho Street. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, we want the right turn into Charing Cross Road because they're going to move some rank space around. We still haven't got a cross rail rank, yep. and we don't have that right and southbound turn. Um, and if a bus, you know, buses can do the left turn from Charing Cross Road into Oxford Street, it's really tight. When they're on diversion, they can do it. Mm. So it would make sense. So it, it will it will change it. I think it's autumn they're going to start doing the, the changes. Yep. But we've not had the final report and the final plans. So we do a quarterly meeting. The Ranks Committee go along and speak to Westminster. And that's due any time now, really. We've got Ranks on Thursday. So that'll be one of the things we're discussing. Yep. Um, and we've got some new rank space that's going to be allocated, that we we did a site visit seven months ago that we waited ages for. So we'll finally have a rank outside Liberties, which we've wanted for ages, yep. and some new rank space in Covent Garden to get round the road closures for sort of outside dining and stuff like that. So that might make life a little bit sort of easier, really. But you mentioned no rights and no lefts on Oxford Street. Is that is, They're going to take away... No, Oxford Circus. So oh, OK. Oxford Circus would be a, a forward only from every direction? Every direction for cycles, <coughs> buses, all all manoeuvres. So because they've made such a nightmare of Regent Street, yeah. they think that it will speed everything up. But what that means is we gain some extra turns. So there'll be roads that you can't turn left or right out of now that you will be able to. Right. Um, there'll be some reversals as well. So I think um, Park Street will be go s- will be southbound down to Brook. Um, North Alderley will reverse. So what they're trying to do is so that they can keep the exemption. When you come across from New Oxford Street, they'll force... So Rathbone will be northbound. They're going to force everything up Rathbone. Right. But the consultant couldn't answer the question, well, where does it go from Rathbone? Because you then go into Tottenham Court Road. And you hit restrictions. And it's like a snake, isn't it? And then the Fitzrovia residents now on an LTN because they're going to bear the brunt of the traffic. So they don't look at anything as a as a whole. Um, but by and large, we we will gain more movements yeah. on or off Oxford Street than we've ever had before, which will be an added bonus. But the proof will be in the pudding that they need to they need to make sure the um, exemption is in false. Yeah. So and to to get into Regent Street would be to use uh, Brewer Street and Great Marlborough. Yeah. Or you'll be di- or to if you um, you'll be done a, diverted through Hanover Square if you want to do a left onto Oxford Street. Oh, okay. So they're going to make a. As a name for that, isn't it kind of the reverse loop to get your to get a right turn? You have to do lefts. Yeah, yeah. Right, <coughs> that seems like they're going to do, isn't it? And they'll yeah, there'll be a a new crossing to make more pedestrian space and spite and sight lines. That's the trade off of not closing Oxford Circus because that was what the previous plan mm. was. It would be this kind of pedestrian area, um, but you will have some changes on Cavendish Square to enable us to get back onto Oxford Street. So John Prince's comes into play. Right. Um, so, so, yeah, overall, it's, um, I, I think it's a it's a win. I mean, there's some rank space issues that we need to iron out because some of the ranks don't come into play till 7 o'clock and they're by Crossrail, which is supposed to be accessible. So the argument is, well, so what do you do? Come off of a step-free train, but then you can't access a taxi on the taxi rank till 7 o'clock. It kind of doesn't make sense. So there's some stuff like that that needs to 
needs to be changed. Uh, and as an outsider looking in, obviously I work alongside Cameron, and she's our representative, the UCG's representative on the ranks committee. And the amount of work she's put in, I'll go publicly, and not just her, she mentioned Paul Brennan from the LG, the amount of work that both her and Paul Brennan have done on behalf of the trade, uh, they do need a thank you because it's yeah. it's, it's non-stop. She's <coughs> con- constantly replying to consultations. Con- to have to point out to people, like when the question come up about Soho, <laughs> you know, Soho Street, Westminster didn't know the answer. And they're supposed to. They're, it's their idea. Yeah, yeah. And then you have to go oh, up the food chain. You are doing a hell of a lot of work in that sense. But it's something that's amazed me is how difficult it is to find out the kind of laws. And there's one that's puzzling me at the moment. This won't cover you. I don't know if you've done anything on the bank, the junction of Queen Victoria Street and Cannon Street. Oh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. delights the bank junction, yeah. All right. <laughs> the, yeah, so on, on coming from St Paul's Churchyard into Queen Victoria, into Cannon Street, sorry, there's a no right turn into Cannon Street, obviously. It's like a hairpin. Um, but because there's a one light on the each side of the pedestrian crossing saying no right to another one on the other, they're saying the other right no right turn refers to Garlic Hill. It always did. So the right turn um, originally did relate to Garlic Hill, I think, when I was on the knowledge. And then it got moved back when they first put the bank restrictions in. So I've used Garlic Hill because it's the only way to get into yeah. to the, to is it it's Dowgate, is yeah. it into the livery halls? Or if you want to drop that side for Cannon Street. So they don't issue tickets for it, but I think it was moved because do you remember down the very bottom by the church? Is it is it little? Is it College? College Hill, College Street. College yeah. Hill, it was um, it was boarded off for ages. I don't know if it was when they built the West Inn, but you couldn't get down there, and the arrow forced you to do the the manoeuvre that you weren't supposed to do, go the wrong way round yeah. the one way street. But I think they've moved it back now, so. You have to use Garlic Hill to get into certain streets. It's a bit like the argument we had about, um, well, how do we get into St Mary's Axe if we can't use Cornhill before they put the exemption in? And, you know, the, the person I spoke to, she's left now. There was there was another one right down near White Kennet Street. Well, how do we get to the travel lodge? And she was like, she didn't even know it was a road. Yeah. Uh, and it's quite frightening. So where possible... Is that the girl from New Zealand? Yeah. Well, she, when I met her a number of years ago in Bank Junction, she actually, she was talking to me about, um, if we let taxi in, we've got to let Addison Lee in. Uh, so uh, this is obviously pre-dates the uh, app so much. Didn't understand... The difference. ...between a, a private hire vehicle and a, and yeah. a licensed taxi. And it's scary. And she was in a major player in the city. But, of course, you've done lots of... Karen's done lots of work. When we, you take... When we... Had, Unfortunately, wasn't successful ultimately with the Bishop's Gate and the Bus Gate, but Cameron put forward what was named in court, and they called it the pop, the pop to her schedule, oh, yeah. all the different roads that you would have to use. And now you are actually putting more on the meter, which is not fair on people. It's yeah. wrong, <clears throat> and people. And I always say this: um, if you might not have co- covered the case, um, but what was absolutely shocking? The question was asked: all about people who are disabled, and TfL Barrister said in court, they don't travel. Oh. Don't travel. That's terrible, mate. Yeah. I think to say. <laughs> and it, but it's absolutely shocking. But don't travel could be construed as can't travel unless mm. there's travel available for us, and then I will travel. That's construed to me is that they don't want you to travel. Yeah. That's that. That was exactly. So what do you do about those people with disabilities? Well, they shouldn't travel. Don't travel. That's yeah. What you said. Absolutely shocking, but the Proctor schedule is 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 famous within the UCG uh, yeah. ranks. Well, yeah. I mean, base. Basically, they were trying to say that there were no other changes that impacted on us. So, in some ways, COVID was a bit of an advantage because as COVID hit, my, my brother's an electrician, so he, he, I think he had a site lockdown for a couple of weeks. So, to give the cab a run out, I used to take him, um, drop him off or, or pick him up. And then you'd come back and you'd have an inbox full of traffic orders. And I think in the space of about three months, mostly Lambeth... Islington and Hackney, and there was a few TfL roads as well. They they changed like 125 roads, so we had students who weren't having appearances that were having to relearn stuff. So I think there was a I forget which run it was, but there was a run, and I checked it back with Andy at Knowledge Companion because he was really yeah. helpful with some of the the sort of the runs. I know it crossed Melvin Road, 
And it went from something ridiculous, like it was a 2.6 mile run, and it doubled. So the students that weren't able to attend appearances, and there was a few that were really close to getting their rec, not only were they not able to have appearances because of lockdown, but what some of what they'd learned in certain areas, particularly around Shepherdus walk and how you'd kind of cut across and when old street was yeah yeah it all got destroyed it It all yeah they had to re kind of learn it and then there was this confusion was it a permanent change was it temporary change and normally i think it was like a six week period if it's been in place for six weeks or more normally you would be expected to call it yeah it was all that confusion and then lambeth were putting their stuff in as well so you know it was a lot it was a lot of chaos and Mm -hmm. confusion and that was without some drivers working, some drivers not working. So in essence, when we ca- all came back to work, you were having to second guess where you could and couldn't go. So that's why we started sending the information out. And it was only a snapshot. But the barrister tried to imply that there w- it hadn't really happened elsewhere. So one of the things that they had done was remove our access um, from the bus lane in Old Street and imply that... It was, it was no different to before. So we went back, we found all the traffic orders and said, look, this is the access we had before. And it didn't meet this threshold of impacting bus times, which is what they were trying to yeah. argue, really. And it just doesn't make sense for the travelling public. Um, Tom Court Road's a, a perfect example of that. The residents wanted us in. And now if you take someone to Macmillan, you've got to go on this you know, ridiculous route to get back to somewhere as Magical basic as tour. Houston. Yeah. Well, I can already see why well, I've seen that Karen's name before, but never the face. But now I've always thought that of Karen being one of the engines behind the CG. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's amazing. I'm yeah. a pest. I'm a pest with the boroughs. Um, so part of the problem is tracking down who to speak to about the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so luckily... The Cab Ranks Committee works with the TFL Ranks team who are pretty much dedicated totally to taxi ranks and obviously highway schemes. So you get some, you get regular information from them. They're, pr- they're pretty on the ball. They get the traffic orders from TFL and you get most of the heads up around like, the gas main um, that's, that's going to be closed for three months, which has got a diversion... Um, sort of Charing, you know, Charing Cross Road northbound. And then they have contacts in boroughs, but they're constantly moving. So to get route and road took 18 months of badgering the transport planner in Lambeth and the TfL Lambeth contact put in the consultation that we should have access to Atlantic Road and Routon Road because if there's a problem with the tube, problem with the train, um, that taxis are publicly hired, you know, they should should go through so we've got this trial that's ongoing but they're still reluctant to put a sign there yet mm. in Stratton Wells they've put all the signs in yeah so it, it's just so inconsistent they've um, left a sign off at the entrance to Glen Eldon I think someone's I suspect someone's took that down because mm. sometimes we've had signs sprayed and then in Dulwich the signs went up straight away or if the, the signs went up straight away yeah. but we've had knowledge shoes we've had to try and appeal tickets for because when they see the taxi sign they presume because they're doing their apprenticeship to be a taxi mm. driver the knowledge i mean one one student he went through three of the three of the signs we've so, all done it so we did we did appeal for him but it's a problem you know hammersmith from <coughs> fulham one of the um the, the knowledge students who's now got his badge he said to me well why can't we have an exemption because they can't even get in there. Yeah, their, you can't have an bottom. exemption because then you, who are you? I, exactly. So it's but those things I think we don't realise they ch- they've changed since we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You might not be able to drive up Oxford Street unless it was a Sunday, but you could probably push your bike through. But now they have to make sure they're on the pavement and because yeah. everything's cameraed up. You it's can't even expensive. you can't get off it and walk it through. Well, they can walk it through on the pavement, is my understanding. That's oh, what, what not, not, oh, okay, I need to know that one. I often do the old walk it through business. I still no, use I, I would have thought you could walk it through, see, once you're off, but I don't know. I'm just, yeah. that's just me thinking. They're normally doing it on the pavement, 
is my understanding. But then some students don't use a bike anymore, and that was a bit of a revelation. So if they don't use a bike, would you aware of that? What do they use them? Well, when I went to the um, the Women's Knowledge Workshop, yeah. where we was invited to go to that, um, a couple of the women had started on a, a moped, um, and they found it terrifying. Yeah. So it's one there right. uses a, a smart car. Yeah. Um, some of them share a car, but a lot of them stop using the bike. There's some that, that do use the bike, but a lot of them found it really intimidating. Yeah. Um, generally, the women don't use bikes, generally. Very, very few. So You can understand. You yeah. can be a bit dumb. I did very little. I bought a brand new bike and did 1,100 miles and completed the knowledge in 1,100 miles. That's how much I used it. Yeah. You know, I just, I, it wasn't for, it wasn't for me. Oh, no, I, I did, but I would have probably done the knowledge years earlier if you could use the bus lanes. They were just trialling Brixton oh, Road yeah. bus lane when I, because um, I've got two uncles that are ex-cab drivers, and I was terrified of using the bike. And i come off a couple of times. You've all done that, no? Yeah. Yeah, bruised and, and battered, but... Um, well, it's a different era now. You don't see knowledge bikes, do you? You don't see them like you no. used to. It's a you, different era. You are completely. starting to see them. I see two yesterday yeah. in Which different places, yeah. Which is good. You are starting to see them. I'm just going to look and see if one's out there now. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're on tracking one. You're tracking one. Um, well, we don't see them like we used to, which was everywhere. Mm. So, yeah. But we they are making a small comeback. We are seeing um, growth. Which is good. Yes. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know if this will upset you, Trevor, but I did write something <laughs> um, to someone the other day. There, aren't, there isn't any funding from anybody until now, the funding is coming from the private hire section. So, in essence, they are almost beginning to double the numbers that are on the knowledge. Now, I know that they have intentions, and I think that their main intention is influence. So, if they have got 400 people on the knowledge through their funding, then they have 400 students worth of influence kind of thing. On their tariff... Uh, and no, so yeah, it doesn't upset me. It's just you know, no. no. But well, it's, it's that, that the other aspects of us is up to us to protect. They basically are holding it together right now because without it, the numbers are still they are they are nothing. I know that now that the examiners are desperate to see people register and get signed on. So these people that are coming well, through got the their private, job then, haven't they? I mean, many years ago, uh, I put forward. I say I the UC. I put forward on behalf of the UCG that we seek, um, and we wrote to people in the city about bursaries, mm -hmm. people on the, the, the knowledge, uh, especially from women and people from the most poorest of backgrounds, no one was interested. Karen, when she got involved in um, on the UCG, one of the things that she's, you know, you've got a manufacturer that produces a taxi. Whether you think of the taxi, whether you think there should be more choice or not, the issue is they sell taxis, but they're putting nothing back into the truck. Yep. Karen's chased that, you know, we've said to TfL, promote it. They don't. Oh, we can't be seen to be giving you a, an advantage. Well, you're not. Get, we're a publicly hired service, like their buses. They promote mm -hmm. buses on their tubes. Yeah. They, they promote. Jump I, on a I bus. don't think promotion works. I'm, I'm not honestly. saying. I'm, I don't know if it does or do, do, doesn't. But what I'm saying is, there's a lots of people who've made a good living out of this mm -hmm. trade and they've not given anything back. Yeah. And that and that's undeniable. Look, I think the issue with private IR and these apps and the encouragement of knowledge, I think that is something that we've got to keep an eye on because I think the proof of that pudding will be in, the, in, in a couple of years down the line. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't think, see, I'm call me cynical, but, you know. You're cynical. I probably, yeah. <laughs> but there's no such thing as a free lunch, is there? And the milk of human kindness doesn't fl throw freely through There is such thing as, as making financial mistakes, such as the Hoover when they did the free holidays to Spain when they you bought a Hoover. So there are promotional ideas that people are experimenting with. Um, I don't honestly see a disadvantage to us with what they're doing. C zero. Obviously, I have things to gain, but the knowledge itself could survive because of it. Now, if the knowledge ends, everybody needs to be aware of that's where we were going. The knowledge will end if there's no, if the powers that be don't see the purpose to people coming through, it will end. And I don't think people are fully aware of how close it got. And I do think that with the with what's happened recently, it's turned a corner. And I also think that in our favour that the private eye apps have have seen and calculated something that they are not going to get the revenue they want from the private hire market, that things are changing over, over time. So things are going to be different in the future and therefore seeing what the future market will be. Apps are going to be here now, whether we like it or not. There is no escaping it. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I think that was my benefit. I, 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 wouldn't think, I, wouldn't, I don't dispute that. The problem I've got, and I've said before to you, is not what the apps, it's the fact that we're both working exactly the same. So in whose market are we working? Yes, but I thought we were working in theirs. But you well, kind of agreed, didn't you, before? No, I think they're, I think they're working in ours. I think they're working in the immediate market, right. which is our market, which is prime for our. And I will, I go to my grave believing that. Well, I hope you don't. But but they, but they, because it has, you know, because it's convenient for everybody, and it would make it all illegal what's taking place, not yep. just in London but all over the UK. If they've they've deemed it that we're working in their market, the work's pre-booked, and TfL get up in a court of law, their case and says says it's pre-booked, but it's immediate. Yeah. Well, I've only had a comprehensive school education, but how can something that's being pre-booked be immediate? Mm-hmm. They call themselves an owl. What is an owl? It's what taxis do. The worry, I think, what the taxi trade doesn't realise is the fact that you can't have a regulated one tier. And these app companies, whether they be uh, overtly ca- uh, so-called taxi ones or their private hire ones, they don't care because they take commission. They're not bothered what mm-hmm. the, pro- the pro- pro- cost is. We don't want them having an influence. If, they have a, if, the, if the knowledge... And the more students on the knowledge, obviously, is better for the long-term, long-term uh, viability of the trade. But if we have a watered-down knowledge, I'm not saying anyone's advocating that, that will be reflected in the tariff. Mm-hmm. You cannot have an apartheid, two, or t- two different standards of taxi driver, because that's not good for us at all. Mm-hmm. And so whilst you say I might have been upset, I'm not upset. I, I want to see more... Obviously, more people. I've said before. I think the last thing it's a, I'd rather more taxis out there. Yes, yes, you said. Than, than private, private hire. Well, you so. do see the fundamental difference between private hire and uh, black taxi drivers is that we are career minded, and private hire. The problem they're having is they are not career minded. They are uh, filling a stop gap. Very many of them, so they cannot get the numbers to maintain their fleets, and it's they. That's the turnover. Yeah, they've always had that, though, haven't they? Well, that, but also now with the added implementation of their rules for working regulations and holiday pays and stuff like that, they're now seeing that their fares had to increase, and now they're seeing that the competitiveness that they had, which was cheap prices, is gone away. Um, so they are definitely having to change their market position. Since the last time you, you know, you kindly invited me uh, along uh, to have a discussion, you won't be invited back. Don't worry. I know that. I gather this is my last. I gather this is my last time, so I'm going to get it all in. Uh, everything I want to say. Right, right. So we're here to about nine o'clock tonight because uh, I've got it. No, but so I, I'm not sure. The last time we met, had Uber announced that they were going to put um, taxis on their platform. No, no. Right. So now, whatever you your views on that. I honestly believe that any taxi driver that goes on to work for that particular, or goes on a platform that needs to have a good look at themselves, because mm. that is that is really controversial as you can imagine. When the announcement was made, there was members of the UCG on, uh, went up in arms, and they want to, uh, you know, all X, Y, and Z. We shouldn't have them uh, as members if anyone goes on that app, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I would say that. Anyone who wants to drive for Uber, perhaps the UCG is not the the app for uh, the um, not the organisation for them, but it's it's another one. And, and Uber are not our friends, so if they want to have taxis on, we do, you know we, they're going to start influencing our tariff, what the knowledge should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what? And they have got no loyalty whatsoever. No, uh, but you know, taxi we agree on this one. I mean, basically, the next step is going to happen is Uber will do a similar deal as Free Now and Addison Lee are going to do, where, and offering support. So then it comes down to who's going to take the what's the word for taking? Um, Shilling. Yeah, there's a word for taking the, the bad money from somewhere. I can't. Isn't remember. it the, the thing that the, uh, the what, what, what Judas Iscariot took? Isn't it? Yes. Uh, twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve pieces the, of silver. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Of. So yes, who's going to take the twelve pieces of silver from this particular thing? So for my view on this one is. Um, Uber did everything it could to destroy our industry and we should, and we should do absolutely zero to support it or make it up. So if you are a taxi driver and you are on the Uber platform, um, I feel sorry. I'm sad that you're doing that. And uh, I don't think that we should victimize them or do anything against them. But really and truly, none of us should be any part of anything to do with Uber. I don't think anyone should have anything in there. No. Just leave them, leave them where they are. Stay away for a minute. Just no, it, I actually don't it, even yeah. think we should have mentioned their name. Well, I, take, I think that we should use the U word or just could, we yeah, shouldn't yeah. even... No, put, no, put, put, put a bleep over it. If it's yeah, ruined. no, it's but your <laughs> but Since we've last met, you've had the Free Now uh, 
announcement they're going to put people through. You've got Comcab. Uh, they're about to do similar, yeah. That, that's been on social media. Throwing Uber now, offering drivers on this multi-platform. But these multi-platforms, that's the problem I've got. You know, it is it is blurring the lines as they... To yeah. yourself, mm. You know, yeah. we're working on the same platform, working exactly the same. Yeah. It wasn't so long ago <laughs> that a certain minicab company went to court to try and... They never really tried to get in the bus lanes. They were trying to get us out of it. Let's call it what it was. Yeah. It was, you know, the case is even tech. And yet now, they own a... a they uh, own Comcab, so... I know. And as I say, I hold more grudges and I don't forget. Yeah. Um, you make your own choice. And I'm not criticising anybody. What I'm saying is, it, now Uber's the bogeyman. Yeah. And, but it... In, there'll be something else around the corner, but if we're all working the same platform on the same platform, exactly the same. Eventually, because it makes business sense, doesn't it? Who's market? Because if you're private hire and we're all working the same, then we you could argue we've got an unfair commercial advantage because we can use bus lanes. All these arguments in the future, I maintain that they're working in airs, and I think history will judge me correct on that yeah. uh, because you've only got to go to before the apps existed there was in the region what 55 56 thousand private hire drivers yeah what made it become such an attractive pro uh, proposition to drive a private hire vehicle it went up to over 100 thousand mm -hmm. we all know why because they were working exactly like a ghost taxi fleet yeah and that's a fact and I'll, I'll go to my grave i said i know everyone knows our barrister though we lost the case our barrister said once you've seen it you can't unsee it, it they're applying for hire it's exactly what they're doing yeah and everyone knows that, but no one wants to go near it because it would call, government would have to make decisions. Companies would turn and say, we're, we're going out of business. Should never have been licensed to be able to do it in the first place. But we can't change history. Can't you, don't, change you, don't, you don't see things have actually moved in a better direction for us? In what way? Well, for a start, the knowledge is picking up. People are more enticed to want to do the knowledge. The PHV drivers are thinking to themselves, I'd much rather be a black cab driver than be a PHV driver. Why are they thinking more and more like that? What, what's happened to them that they don't want to work in that market anymore, but they want to work in this one? But we, the proof of that pudding is in the eating. They've applied to go on it, but no one's completed it yet. Well, but I think they always wanted that. I always thought it was better. Mm. Well, I was private hire 20 odd years ago and we always thought it was better I mean mine was to make up that extra job with HGVs as we touched on earlier That's yeah. an, it's an extra job private hire sometimes isn't it but I think you always wanted to but now you've got the opportunity of someone helping you with funding yeah, yeah that, my, my worry I mean I met the person who we had a, a all trade meeting on the knowledge uh, last summer but the guy from Free Now uh, I know that they're, they're funded but he thinks the knowledge is too difficult mm hmm so you've certainly said they've got 400 drivers, they've got influence. So who's to turn and say that? I'm not saying, just an hypothetical. They start whispering in ears 18 months, two years' time. This this is taking too long. Our, our drivers have been on it too. It's this X, Y, and Z. Because and once we do water down our standards, that's but, it. Well, haven't they got a limit though, Free Now? Haven't they got a limit of time they fund it? They don't fund it indefinitely. You can't be on the knowledge being funding from free now for 10 years, can you? They're looking at a two-year minimum programme at the moment. So then they would be looking for a two-year knowledge then, wouldn't they? Or fund, um, no, they fund it yourself out of that. Yeah. So, and again, they're looking for a... They're, they're testing the water of where they can go ahead. Yeah. They're seeing what they can happen. Exactly. So we... I'll embrace and I'm, I'm pleased that there's more people on the knowledge because obviously, as I said, longevity, longevity of the trade. But if we've got to keep an eye on this because these are... Historically, you know... You, this is why we found ourselves where we have, because we never kept an eye. But there is a thing, you, you know, you have to do jobs on the circuit for free now to keep your mm. uh, entitlement. Um, so the idea is that if I want to be a, a taxi driver, it's actually quite good. I could join free now and kind of be funded and not have to pay anything. Plus, I've got my part-time job, which we're all looking for to try and fund us while we're going through. Um, the idea then for free now is that they get that person for the duration of their knowledge yeah. which is longer than they're getting other drivers for so let's say it takes you two years let's say it takes you four years they've got you on that circuit you're being funded by them for four years whereas other people are trying to struggle through the knowledge anyway and, and fund it themselves um so their incentive is to try to keep you under their umbrella and working for them for as long as possible so then you're working for them but when you become a taxi driver Taxi drivers are free to work for free now, now as it is, and lots yeah, of them do. But what will happen? Uh, we don't work for nobody. 
Because mm-hmm. there's no such thing as agent principal in the taxi trade, and nor should there be. We were, we're sole traders, we work for ourselves. Yep. So we can only applaud it at the moment and say it's good that the numbers are going up. But it is very early. There's been no, no one's probably started appearances yet. No, So it's a very early embryonic stage. Let's talk about that in the future. I mean, yeah. I think there's a couple of elephants in the room, though. Exactly. The, um, one of the last knowledge workshops we went to, I did say, well, LEVC sell cabs and they sell cabs to cab drivers. Yes. Surely there's an incentive for them um, to to want to kind of, you know, they could fund so many places or whatever that, you know, and recently on social media, they keep um, putting different tweets and things out. Yet at the same time, we've got lots of existing members and non-members complaining about lack of parts, ERAD issues, the heating doesn't work, you, you know, and it's not a cheap cheap mm-hmm. vehicle by any stretch. So I think they need to step up to the plate and put something back. So when we did flag that, the response back was, oh, well, I think the apps need to do more. Um, <laughs> you know, that was that was how it was was kind of put. But also, you know, there there is an issue where we have to look at ourselves and say, well, why are we not funding it out of our licensing fee? Which is how it should have been before. Which yeah. is historically... If that came back, that would have been the saving grace. You before your time, David, mm-hmm. but there was no fees to do the knowledge, zero. And this would have been the best idea. Absolutely. But nobody, and the, the longer you let it go on, because I was very critical of the fact that TFL let this, I coined it a little bit like, you are selling a product and watching the sales of your product go down and down and down and down. It's managed decline. I mean, it's they exactly weren't the really selling decline. a product. I mean, my background's HR. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I also said at the last workshop, which we didn't get to the end of, which was just after the, <laughs> the free now launch, but that's a whole different mm-hmm. issue, is retention. You know, you've got people that have been out the sort of length of time that I've been out, my sort of age bracket, who are now kind of weighing up, or well, do I stay? Um, is it is it worth staying? Am I getting the return on my investment? Because that's what you do the knowledge for. Yeah. You, you don't just fall into it. You make a conscious decision to do it. Um, and, you know, the dropout rate's always been particularly high. All the students we spoke to when the review started, not one of them said they wanted it to be easier. They wanted it to be fairer. Yeah. Um, and they wanted to go in there, put their bum on the chair and an appearance and feel like they'd had a fair crack. That If they put the work in, that they had a reasonable to high proportionate chance of scoring. Um, and it's frightening, the amount of appearances. I think in some cases it's almost trebled. Sometimes when hmm. you see the scoring... How many people got D's, you know, compared to B's, C's, let alone A's? Yeah. Um, that from what I recall from when we used to go out to the points collector at the carriage office, it, it just seems like why is it taking the length of time or why are you having so many more kind of appearances? I don't think that elephant in the room has been resolved. Um, the red lining may have kind of gone away. It hasn't really, though, has it? Because mm. it's not... No, you still get red line, but you don't go back a whole level. Go back. We we hold the view, the UCG, to scrap it completely. Yes. That's our policy. I don't know if the LTDA maybe agree with you or not. I don't know what their stance is on that. I, I think at the knowledge workshop, we were all against red lining. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm a great believer you get more of honey than vinegar. Um, me too. You, you know, if you're if the person is not only giving up their time they may have given up their job. I mean, I reduced my hours down to four days a week when I went on to appearances. I'm still doing a full-time job, but mm-hmm. being paid for four days a, a, a week. Um, I still had to buy my bike. I still had to pay for my appearances. Still used to buy my... But that's a choice you've made yeah. to go through and complete the knowledge because at the end of it, you are going to have a... You know, it's the, the longest crit. interview in, in yeah. the world in some ways. You are going to have that that earned badge that you've invested in and it still remains i think in london the the hardest thing to earn and the easiest thing to lose yeah so, so for 20 years they had a red line in system where you went back from year 2000 and when i first raised the issue that the red line in needs to go there was very strong protests and is it vitriol yeah from people in our trade that very often in our trade, you're not allowed to even voice an opinion that others might not agree with. And that's a, a problem because certainly you need to be able to say and do debate and discuss. 
You make money out of the trade. Um, ulterior motive is a, is a way well, of shooting down anybody. Yeah, yeah. you've got an ulterior we're motive. All, we all shot down with ulterior motive. Look, no well, argument, well, no nothing. But look, we've all got an ulterior Absolutely. motive. Absolutely. I mean, yes. it's a real... If you think about when you do the knowledge, you, you know... It, when I did the knowledge, you'd be out there and you would see a lot more people on their bikes and you'd nod at each other, whether you knew them from school or you, mm. you, you know, you just, it was a courtesy thing and drivers would do it to you. The moment you get your badge, you're in competition with every other taxi yep. out there. Um, and all right, we're all told about etiquette and some people take that seriously and other people don't. You, you know, they'll cut in front of you um, and are that desperate to take, take the job and you know i'm a bit philosophical about that i think well if you if you did you know, that badly why don't we um i mean you are one of the three organizations we spoke didn't we dave why is there three organizations which we could cover but why aren't why don't the three of you get together and produce a rule book that we then police within our industry as you are the organizations this is the thing we, we could create our own enforcement we, in our why do we book, need other enforcement we've got an etiquette bit in our in our, in our, in our rule book. we had an etiquette section yeah uh, the three look, it's it's not as simple as that is it because no, it's not simple but it's certainly a step that we could take we yeah. could enforce it by making people that pass out actually do something that you are these are the rules these are not um, something yeah. that we're saying or we, we think you should do. No, this is our industry. These this is are the rules. Yes. This is, you, this is what you must do. Yeah, I, I've, I wouldn't have an objection to that. I mean, but obviously, the, the, we've got more organisations in unions in our industry and we've got cab drivers. <laughs> yes, know, it's true. You know, but being ta- cabbies, we're always going to be, oh, I don't like what he said, so I'm going to form my own because that's the way we are. We're, we're opinionated people. Mm. But on something like etiquette, yeah, I, I think that there is common ground there. Yeah. I mean, but but we and it's not you know it would be a party political broadcast for the UCG. We're we're slightly different than everybody else, and we, we would say that it's because we're we're membership led, so we have votes on everything. Right, you know, maybe too much at times. You know, we have policies, things like talking about apps earlier, and we believe all taxi apps should be regulated and licensed, every single one of them, because mm-hmm. something. Not everyone, that's no one else. Everyone goes, oh, well, they, well, you know, their views on their organisations, their views, not for me to comment on. The UCG, and she's our chairman, she'll tell you, we, we're more membership-led. So you, we will have a meeting, we're going to have a meeting in the early part of February, yeah. and members will be get up at this meeting and they will have some ideas. And, if, you know, and I'm not mocking no member who might listen to this, but one of them might decide that we're going to speak French every third, third Thursday of the month. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got a... That person got the right to put it forward. Yep. I might think it's the maddest thing I've ever heard because I struggle with English. But we would then debate it and then we would mm-hmm. vote on it because that's what we are and that's the sort of people we attract. And and I don't want to change. I say I, it's not me because it's no I. The UCG will not change. Yeah, It will always appeal to a certain element of the trade. Well, not only that, Trevor, the UCG has been working very, very hard. And Karen, yes. you are showing that. I mean, everything <laughs> that I see actually happening trade-wise in terms of changes, it seems, seems to be stemming from actions taken by the UCG. Thank you. That's kind of you to say. Well, why have we got free trade organisations, Dave? I don't know. I, 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 I said, I'm a member of two. And I know some yeah. people say you, should, you shouldn't be. You, sh- you say you shouldn't be. I think it's but I'll tell you why I am, and I'll say why. I've got more than one member of family. Which I, I, dis- I disagree with on lots of things, but I back them one hundred percent. So that's why I say people speaking for me. If I can't chuck a shilling in, there's something wrong with me. Now, it doesn't mean to say I agree with everyone because I don't agree with my own wife all the time, but I back her one hundred percent. Yeah. So it's like for me, I, I would I would happily pay into all of them if they're all going to go up and speak. Look, I'd rather they all got together on one one thing to start with, and then another thing, and it grew where you had more togetherness. But yeah, it, don't, it doesn't bother me to be in more than one. Well, Dean touched on, you know, we've learned a lot there. We were, you know, and I, I, I can wince with the way we behaved back then days. You were right? reactionary back then, I think. I think so. I think we, we just want, I think we were angry. And yeah, we wanted yeah, it. and you had we a bloody were, right to be angry. Absolutely. And we wanted it with everybody. And yeah. if you wasn't as angry as us, then you must be our enemy. Mm-hmm. It was that sort of siege mentality. Yeah. There's not many women in the trade, as we know. So she, remember, at the time when she's in the taxi trade, you've got, all the different unions, all the different organisations, and then you've got the U- the UCG causing absolute havoc. Now, first, I didn't, I've never spoken to Karen. The first time I saw Karen was when I was addressing the, in the House of Lords, wasn't it? And I, and then then I started seeing that she was at our meetings. Never, never ever spoke to her. 
But she chose, she went and looked at everybody. Yeah. Uh, all the different orgs. And, and then she chose who she felt she was was more akin to her. And then she got involved with the UCG. And a lot of our, our I'll, I'll go on record there, a lot of our policies now have been stemmed from what Cameron's yeah. pushed. How, can you be can you be ousted as the leader of the yes, UCG? Yes, every year I stand for election. We every all, year we all can. Um, yeah. can. yeah, we're a, we're an elected committee, um, and we have a, a twelve month perfect kind of because that seems to be um, controversial. Another organ. Well, no, I think it's necessary that change must come. Even if you was the greatest leader of all time, I really think you need to step down at certain stages and, and let people come in. So. Um, We've got shelf life. Yeah, and I think you've also got a certain amount of energy that you need to apply to certain things. Um, and as I said earlier, the actions and the way that your organisation is moving is really quite good. Um, I like it. I like what you're doing. And I think, Trevor, it's not actually you that's doing a piece, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go on, you know, I'm, the, I'm sometimes the, uh, the public face of the UCG and at meetings... Etc. But I've like anybody. I, I I'm only a custodian. Yeah. I don't own the UCG. It will be for people like Karen to take the, it on to its next level. Yeah. And the shelf life. We've all got a shelf life. I will go. The members won't have to kick me out. Be, mm. and it won't have to be a coup. I will know when I when I don't have when I know that I'm not giving them all that I've got. Then I know it's time. Well, my worry for you, Trevor, is your health because. Um, it doesn't, it, these things are not healthy for us to carry so much passion into for so long. It's only so much you can do for so long. So I worry for your health, mate. That's kind of you to say. Isn't it? Lovely. He's <laughs> killing me off. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, get your well, cotton chips and a pint out of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it'd be fair to say everyone on our committee puts that 110% in. But yeah. I think sometimes you, you have to think of the, if you think of it, as an organisation, if you were developing a company, is you would you grow over time, and you can only be angry for so long, yeah. and then you need to move or pivot from being angry to proactive. And I think the thing, I, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I I didn't um, put myself forward to be on the committee. I um, I was asked as a favour to help out with some admin by by Angela, and that's how I got got invited to the um to the meeting so I used to used to do that and help out um and I had to be sort of talked into um you know putting myself forward yeah because I'm just not that sort of person I'm a kind of behind the scenes person and then unfortunately for you caught my eye and I went and I says would you want to do this do you want to do yeah. that would do you regret it um no I don't now probably three years in but at the time it it sort of because I'm I am quite a shy person. The, f- the bit that put me off was the thought of of actually um, yeah standing up in front of a group of members and yeah. speaking publicly. But I knew I could hold my own at the meetings, and they were a real eye opener. When you go and meet with different people at, at TFL, it, it was it was frightening. Mm. Um, How so are you now? Not frightening in terms of who you're meeting, frightening in terms of what you're listening to. You're not intimidated <laughs> so much now. But how are you um, now, though? How are you now with that? Oh, three years later. Membership um, meetings. You're not nervous now, are you? No, not, not, no, not now. I mean, uh, you know, I like our members. I mean, in some ways, I... They're great when they, meetings. Yeah, they are. I'm, when, but I'm biased. They're meetings are terrific. When our members <laughs> join, I mean, the idea is you don't want... That's the time you want to speak to the member and then it's a bit like an insurance policy. You don't really want to have to speak to them unless something happens. Because it's that kind of reassurance that if if something does happen, you're there and you'll you'll speak to them. But the the real kind of revelation for me was when they was changing all the roads, was that we didn't have a voice as as you know a, as a taxi trade, and there was all this you know there's a lot of competition for road space, curbside access, and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. We weren't even on that radar. No, it's and, and you think an afterthought. Mm. You, you think we've been around for like 350 years. And I remember speaking to Trev and saying to him, look, there's there's a, a cycle campaigner that I sort of follow on Twitter, not the crazy mad one, um, but it's actually a sort of decent guy. Would you mind if I spoke to him? Because every time you spoke to a borough, they didn't want to know. Mm. They wanted evidence. What's his name? Um, it's Danny, the guy. He He's actually now works for Active Travel. So I did a Zoom with him in COVID. And we weren't really the problem. 
in terms of the um, the real kind of cycle campaigners as the problem on the road because they consider us professional drivers. We do take due to care and attention when we're turning. We weren't really the, the kind of threat. But, I, you know, it was a real wake-up moment mm. that, you, you know, you're not even on their radar. We didn't have the contacts in the boroughs. Um, things were happening and being done to us. And I said to Trevor, well, you know, we, we're going to need to be more proactive. We're going to need to, uh, even if we've got to educate these people, what the difference is between a taxi and a minicab. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we started doing. And that sort of, in some ways, we became a bit more proactive. We also become professional. And that, that is a lot of that is down to you. Yeah. More professional organisation. And you take credit for that. And I think some of the landscape changed, though, to be fair, because historically with the boroughs, you probably could go and bang your fist on the, the table um, in a kind of more 1970s union yeah. kind of environment and get your own way and threaten to cause havoc on the roads and all the rest of it. I'm not saying that's what we did, but historically that was what happened many, many years back. And now you're dealing with people um, that you have to deal with in a very different way. You, you're not going to get everything that you, you want, but there are some areas where you will get stuff and you have to approach it in a different way. You mm. have to have the evidence and you have to say, well, no, actually, you're wrong and this is why you're wrong and we can demonstrate it. Yes. So we take people out now and we, we where possible, some resist, but um, we want you to see it on the street. There's no point giving us a rank if the public can't see the light. What's the point of that? It's just wasted space. Just, yeah. People are just going to park on it. Um, or, you know, Veer Street, stick in a rank that all the delivery drivers park on next to a building you've knocked down. I mean, what a waste of time and money. These things cost money. So they, they need to understand the impact and the impact on their journey times. Because when it comes to tariff and it goes out to public consultation and everyone says the fares are high... Well, the other elephant in the room is, well, then if you don't give us the access to the road, you're actually making our fares more higher. expensive. Yeah, It's just ridiculous. Um, mm. uh, and, you know, we want to we wanna do this job and we want to do the job because, not because where we want to go, where our passengers want to go. Uh, and that, at the end of the day, that's what we're all in it for. Yeah. And I think that's sometimes that's forgotten. It's all right, all these planning committees and events, but ultimately we're, we're driven by where the public want to go, yeah. not where we want to go.